Hey y'all, um, it's hot. So I am not gonna stay in the garden long, but I just wanted to come take care of these flowers. Uh, just take a look at this. These are those purple cosmos and they've just gotten so big that they've toppled over. I mean, they're tall. This one's taller than I am, which is quite impressive. But um, the, the stalks are, I don't know if you can see that, the stalks are just tipping over and I've tried tying them up, but it has actually broken my string. So I did a little bit of reading and I think you're supposed to trim these back. Uh, you plant them in the spring, they come out, they bloom, and then midsummer you trim them back. Um, it said all the way down to 12 inches. I don't know if I'm quite that brave to trim all this down to 12 inches, but I am gonna trim it back pretty drastically. Save the, the pretty cut flowers, bring them inside. Um, and then these will actually bloom again for fall for me. So, and um, I think it actually said when I read that there should be new growth within a week or two on them. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I don't kill the plants. Um, but then we'll be able to see more of these zinnias that are kind of stuck behind here and uh, they'll actually be able to come back and fall because I'm a little afraid that if I keep them going like this, they're actually gonna break at the, the stem's gonna break at the ground down there because it's just gonna be too heavy. So we're gonna trim all this back. And you can also see there's a, um, a vine growing through here. I'm not sure if this is just a weed vine or if this is some morning glory. I, I know I see some morning glory um, vines in there. So we're gonna trim all this up and clean up this whole, this whole area. I wanted to show y'all, these had been leaning over and so close to the ground for so long. Look at that. They were growing roots down their stem, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess it would have just stretched straight across the yard if I would have let it. We're also gonna trim up this basil plant it's like the one that I told you about last week. I just never got over here to trim this one. So we are gonna pick a good spot and cut it. And now from that cutting, we could potentially have another basil plant or two out of this. Okay, I came over here to be the orange cosmos that don't grow near as tall. And I was just gonna snip out these dead ones so that we have a lot of new flowers coming in because when they die, you're really supposed to clip them off so that way you have new growth, not let them go to seed. But while I was down here, um, I showed you these guys last time. This is it. This is when it gets to seed. And I've just been taking these and <laughs> throwing them in the garden so I don't have to reseed later on. Um, but then look at this. These are all new. This is a new growth. All new Cosmos coming in. And I didn't do any work. That's awesome garden surprises there you have it the mess I also wanted to give you guys an update on the seedlings we planted so as you can see we haven't had a lot of growth but it's only been a few days a week maybe so we have some okra coming in uh, the Swiss char hasn't have it ha doesn't have any sprouts yet but we have some turnip sprouts some collard sprouts and even our pumpkin is starting to see the light. So that's very exciting. I also have these um, squash plants that I planted about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I'm gonna wait till they just get slightly bigger and then we're gonna, um, that back garden back here, back there, those squash plants are, uh, they just really didn't do well this round. Uh, some bugs got to them and I think maybe too much water. So we're gonna replace um, some of, pull up some of those that are really not doing well and put these new ones in. Hey y'all, it's actually been a couple days since I made the last couple videos. You'll notice I'm wearing different clothes. Um, that was on Saturday, today's Monday. We actually got rained out, so I had to stop doing all gardening stuff that day. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show you was today, we were gonna work in 
do a little bit of work on the tomatoes. A lot of the tomatoes have grown a lot in the last couple weeks and I have not trellised them all up. So I um, found this broken apart trellis in the trash can. I'm gonna use some of those long poles for these um, tomato plants and I'm gonna tie them to them similar to what I have these pieces of rebar doing. Um, I also noticed that some of the tomato plants have leaf curl. Um, from what I understand, if the leaves are curling up, uh, it's not too much to worry about. It's just something going on in the environment. I can tell you what it is. It's 100 degrees outside in Louisiana in summer heat. Um, I kind of remember this happening to my tomatoes last year. That's why I planted these Mexican petunias, hoping that they would grow tall and maybe give the tomatoes a little bit of shade. Um, I think they're just probably getting a, a little too hot and a lot of sun. So from what I've read is the tomatoes will curl themselves up like this um, to protect themselves. And as the environmental conditions, if the environmental conditions um, kind of relax, they will also relax. So we'll kind of keep an eye on these. I'm gonna make sure that I water them pretty frequently. Um, you can see there's baby tomatoes on there. I'm pretty excited about these tomatoes plants because these, these with the little purple stem, I'm not sure the variety, but these actually grew from seed the very first time in my life that I grew tomatoes from seed. Um, these up front I've had for longer, but I bought them as starter plants. So I'm gonna trellis up these tomatoes today. And I'm also gonna go through and snip off all the, uh, just kind of prune the bottom to make sure they're getting a good airflow. Uh, prune off all these bottom leaves on the tomatoes up until they have their first little tomato batch. You can see little tomatoes there too. That's so exciting. Okay, so let's get busy. Okay, so another reason to prune um, those tomatoes is um, when those leaves touch the ground and then it gets wet and, um, you know, humid, uh, that's when a lot of disease happens in tomatoes. So if you keep the bottom of the tomatoes pruned all the way until that first tomato is um, hard, uh, blooming, then it, you kind of prevent a lot of those diseases and pests uh, before they even get there. So to trellis it, I'm going to use these um, poles. I'm going to take this old trellis apart. It's actually coming apart pretty easily. Um, and I'm going to stick this straight into the ground. Pretty deep down because it's pretty wobbly. And then I have this just twine. It's actually like waxed string that I'm using to tie out the tomatoes with. But you can really use, you know, like literally whatever you have. <laughs> So we made a discovery so on our it's tomato so plants soft. and it was not a happy discovery. So we have two of these guys that I can see big ones so and I don't know if you can see on it's this so leaf. Soft. Tons of little babies. Oh my goodness. So we are going to probably take down that whole tomato plant. It was um, actually toppling over and sitting on the ground for a long time. But um, I don't want, I'm gonna try to avoid them getting all of the tomato plants. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that one up and give it to the chickens. Y'all, I'm so sweaty. Okay, so bad news. There were quite a few hornworms on my tomatoes. I actually pulled up one of the whole tomato plants and then just heavily pruned everywhere that I saw um, babies. I'm sure that there's more eggs, uh, but I'm just gonna keep my eye on it. This is why it's important to me. Number one, I just explained how excited I was to grow tomatoes from seed. I've never really successfully grown tomatoes. Um, the birds have actually, and squirrels have always gotten it before I have, but we don't have a big tree in our backyard anymore. So I figured that would be less likely this year. Um, also, I have more tomatoes seeded. So I was really excited about putting them in this same area. 
So I really want to keep this area clear of um, any pests. It's so funny because I just read more about hornworms and they turn into um, hawk moths, which they said is commonly mistaken, is a moth that can hover and it's commonly mistaken for butterflies. So it was so funny because the other day I was looking out the kitchen window at the garden, not over here actually on the other side. So I'm about to go check out those plants, um, but I don't have tomatoes growing over there. So I saw this moth or butterfly and I, it kept, it was hovering, it was bigger and it kept hovering and I kept thinking to myself, man, is that a hummingbird? Man, is that a hummingbird? No, it was probably laying little hornworm eggs all over my tomatoes and now I'm having to peel them all out. So um, let me show you what we pulled out. So far, um, this is the whole plant with some of the leaves from the other plant and let me see if I can find where, so there's the big guy. There's actually two of them. Oh, there's the other big guy. And then this plant was obviously the worst. And let me see if I can find where all the little babies are. Look at this leaf. There's babies on that leaf. There was one leaf that was just covered. There's babies here. There's babies there. So, um, this is bad news for me. This is really good news for the chickens. There you go, ladies. All right, y'all. So I think I'm gonna call it a day. Um, <laughs> that was a lot. I did trellis up the tomatoes that um, are still remaining. I only pulled one plant up, so hopefully that will be the end of it. Just don't have super high hopes. I'm gonna come out here uh, every day for the rest of the, probably forever, the week, definitely a week or two and check these tomato plants and make sure I don't see any more of the baby caterpillars or hornworms. Um, and I bet the summer heat had something to do with this leaf curl, but this plant back here also had quite a few leaves with baby caterpillars on it. And I bet that that was some of its environmental stressors. So hopefully um, after taking those babies off, I'm gonna water this girl and hopefully she'll come back to life and uh, we can avoid any more hornworm infestations. Until next time, see y'all later.